so so <laughs> I'm awfully sorry about that. So after waiting for you. So Ruby typing. So this year I'm going to talk about the uh, types and then various type are related to the Ruby. So warning. So this talk is highly technical. So you are not supposed to understand part of them. <laughs> but the uh, very important part is non-technical. So I will emphasize the, the important non-technical part so the, you don't have to worry about that. So let me talk about types. Blood types. <laughs> so the mankind has some kind, uh, several types of the blood types. The most famous one is uh, ABO systems. Uh, ABO system is uh, the our blood type according to have the factor A and then factor B. So the, we have four types of the blood types in ABO systems. So the blood type A, which ha who the people of the blood type A has the factor A. And the uh, people with the blood type B is uh, blood, uh, factor B. And the uh, blood type AB has both factor A and factor B, and the blood type O does not have uh, either blood uh, factor A and factor, factor B. So we are class, all humankind are classified into these four category for blood types. The, do you know your own blood types? No, no. So, very uh, funnily, so all Japanese, uh, almost all Japanese uh, know their blood types, according to some stat superstition. Uh, we Japanese, most of us, believe the, our blood types influence our personality. So the, our personality can be classified according to our own blood types. For example, the blood type A is a kind of the organized personality. He or she loves to make everything organized. And then blood type B tends to be optimist. Then so he has, uh, he or she has very uh, bright viewpoint to, toward the future. A blood type A, B, since they have the both factor A and factor B, they have some kind of a dual personality. So the he or that people with blood type A, B has some, sometimes organized, very organized, and sometimes very optimistic. And then uh, blood type O, people with blood type O don't care about small things. I happen to be blood type O. It's kind of like a fortune telling. And uh, we have this psychological effect named the Burnham effect, which is the people tend to believe vague and general descriptions of their personality. So, so if you're a blood type A, and uh, you were told, okay, you are blood type A, you are a very organized person. Yeah, you, have, you should have the very organized personality, so you are very easy to believe that kind of the, the, your personality description. So, do you believe it? Maybe not. No, that's okay. The important point is, I'm blood type O, and I don't care about the small things. And I don't want to care about small things. Uh, things should just work. And the personality influence design, since I design Ruby, <laughs> <laughs> things should just work. And I want to get a uh, get job done and let things is better. And I really, really believe in the succinctness is power. As the Paul Graham once uh, told about the, the, his idea of programming language. So the 
Ruby, design of Ruby, is highly influenced, my, influenced by my personality. The dynamic types is one of them. Uh, dynamic type means the values have types. But the expression or variable does not have types. So that is dynamic types. So in, in description of the type system, we have the two-dimensional uh, aspects, like the static versus dynamic. There are static types of programming languages and the dynamic types of programming language. The, the example of the static type language is the Java, or Scala, or Haskell, or Camel. They are static type language. And uh, Ruby, uh, Smalltalk, Python, uh, Lisp, or other programming language are dynamic type. And uh, the other aspect is the strong versus weak. Some programming languages are strong. That means the, the types cannot be uh, change, changed or uh, converted automatic, automatically. Or weak, that you can break the time system in some way. So the example, so the Ruby is a strong dynamic type programming language. And the Perl or Oak is a weak dynamic program, type programming language. The Haskell and the other static type uh, programming language are uh, strong static uh, type programming language. And the uh, programming language like C, which can cast pointers to other uh, type of pointers, so you can easily break uh, memory access. So these are weak static programming languages. So the dynamic typing leads to design policy, which is a dark typing. So remember this picture last year? Dark typing. This is very important factor in programming language like Ruby. So dark typing means not this one, typing dark. That means if it works like a dark, works like a dark, and it quacks like a dark, it is a dark. This is a very important uh, principle in Ruby. So if so if let me see. <laughs> it's a duck because it quacks like a duck. It's a duck just because it's working like a duck, right? This is duck typing. So uh, we don't care the internal detail of the data. We just uh, we just care about how it behaves. So in, in duck typing, we do not classify like animal, mammal, human type things. Uh, we do not check types. We just ask object to behave. So we don't care about inheritance. We don't care about the structure. We just care about how it behaves. So we can ignore inside detail. So we ask computer this, to dispatch. So pick the proper method or the process the, they want for that particular object. So we don't want to care about small things. So things just work. So for example, so dark typing like this. So suppose we have the function named the log, which has the two arguments. Uh, we, the first one is the destination to output the log. The second one is the message to print in the log. So if uh, we have the static type of programming language, we, it, it should be goes like this. Log, DSD, destination, which is IO, and the message, which is string, right? But uh, what if we want to redirect uh, your log message into a string? So in Ruby, we have the something named string IO, so you create a string IO object, then uh, call log uh, standard IO as a destination, then stdio uh, string IO dot string uh, retrieves uh, the input strings. So this this is quite easy. The important point is string IO is not a subclass of IO, nor they have 
common interface or engine like that. They have no relations. But in Ruby, it works like magic. Just because uh, string I/O, even though string I/O does not have any relation, direct relation with inheritance or uh, interface, but uh, it it has same method set to I/O, so it just behave like I/O, an I/O. So string I/O works like a duck, works like I/O, uh, the quacks like I/O, so it is I/O. It is duck typing. Right? But a static type version, which is this one. So this one says IO here, here. So it, if it's string IO is passed, since string IO does, is not a subclass of IO, it refused to compile. It refused to compile. So the, this way, the, this kind of program is prohibited in static type programming language. So static type version doesn't work as I, we expected because string IO doesn't have common superclass or no inter interface to IO. So string type check fails at long time, uh, compile time, I mean. And then compared to that, duck typing or dynamic typing allows you to ignore internals. Just behave, you can focus on behavior of the object. So low, so you don't have to care about the internal or inheritance tree or anything. So we, you just care about how it behaves. So it has lower mental cost in development. So doubt typing is open for the future. So you don't know. So when you uh, create, a, you, when you define the log function, so you, you don't have to decide about the future. So you, you just care about how it behave. So the, in the future, you might want to uh, redirect your log message into the standard I/O or any other I/O-like object. But uh, so it is open for the future. So that means the duck, duck typing enhances flexibility. But uh, you know, dynamic typing has some drawbacks. Oh. So. Dynamic typing does not check type in compile time, so the errors, especially type errors, only found in runtime. So, and then, so, and then, uh, often you get very bad error message, like uh, undefined method foo in nil class or something like that. So, it, you know, it is quite difficult to understand, in, especially in runtime. And then you have coverage problem. So the, unless you have the 100% coverage test, so you may miss the, some kind of the type error in your development. The, in, on the contrary, the static type programming, programming language, so type check has done in compile time, 100% coverage, so you at least your, your compile success, you're, you're, you can be sure your, uh, your program doesn't have any uh, type mismatch errors. And uh, the most, the last but not least is the less documentation. The, the type system, type description uh, itself can be worked as a, uh, the doc documentation. So the, in Ruby or any other program, uh, dynamic type of programming language, we often like write like this. So the call, the calculated factorial number, it takes integer, then then returns integer. So it's a type. So it 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 brings me some kind of the contradiction. So I don't want to specify types just because no the. The programs the, without any type notation just works. So in that viewpoint, the type notation, type description is redundant. So you know, I don't want to care about small things. So for me, type notation is small things. I don't want to write that. But I don't want to specify types because by specifying types, 
we restrict, we refuse future uh, flexibility, future, uh, we are close to future enhancement. But at the same time, the, when we provide our code to others, we need documentation for users. So if we put type information in documents, it's kind of like a static typing without the enforcement. So you write, you write type notation, to type description anyway, like a, like a previous example, like this. You write type anyway. And, uh, but this is a mere comment. So this is no enforcement. This is no type check. This is no compile time check. So that's, that's worst of both worlds. <laughs> So, no compile time check. So here's a room for improvement for future Ruby. So we don't want to write types, but we want to have some kind of type information from, uh, from code. But uh, we are engineers, fundamentally, so we try to solve problems with technologies. So, so let me think about the solution. Okay. The one candidate is static typing with type inference. Type inference is nice. So, you, so by inference from code, you can have the type information, but uh, you don't have to write it. But, uh, but still, static typing lacks flexibility, as I explained before. And uh, there are some programming languages that introduce the gradual typing or optional typing, which is, say, for example, the Groovy has options uh, static typing, or TypeScript has the, the similar things, optional uh, typing system, or gradual typing system. So the, these are, so you add several, uh, you add type description in some part of the program, but it's not uh, the mandatory, so you can drop if you don't want to, or you can put any, as a type description. But uh, the f they are fundamentally static. The, the partly static, the rest is dynamic. So, so since it is optional, you, you won't have the 100% coverage. And uh, since it's static, so you uh, lack of uh, flexibility, as I explained before. So it's also the worst of both worlds. So I don't want, like, so the optional static typing shares same drawbacks of the static typing system. So what we want is something similar to static typing, but that allows duck typing. So duck typing is very important uh, policy and very important in Ruby. So we want to keep that. At least I want to keep that. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, static typing is good, especially compile time uh, co check is pretty nice. So what shall we do? So the think about that, static typing with duck typing. So I look for, uh, look for uh, many programming language. Yeah, I'm a programming language geek, so I studied about a lot of, lot of programming languages. So, there, there is a language with static typing, with duck typing, which is Go. Uh, Go programming is kind of like this. So the focus on the log function definition. So DST, take two, uh, two arguments, then write to the DST, and then this is type, then this is type definition. The log DST is the anything which has the right object, a right method, can be considered as a log DST. You don't have to be a subclass of anything, or you don't have a, you don't have to share common interface. So just you have the right method. This is only requirement. So the any type, 
even uh, I.O. or string I.O. or anything which has the right method can be applied to the log function. This is back typing, and this is with static typing. This is quite nice. Uh, they call it the structure of subtyping. So, but uh, you can add inference to go. With, so in the ideal goal, you can drop off the type notation. So function, DST, and message. The DST should have the right method, and uh, you can call uh, that method with message. So you can generate the DST. You can read DST, type of DST, should have a right method. So write takes one argument with message. So with this information, you can generate interface from code. So from this code, this is the, the ideal, uh, my own version of Go. And then you can generate this version of the current Go. So if Go, something like this, could be possible in, in Go, a language like Go. So the language like Ruby can similar things. I call it soft typing. So soft typing is a type system defined by behavior. So type is defined by, uh, the, defined by a set of methods, and it's, they are the argument types. And uh, thus, so inferred types don't have names. So, so many people, including static type uh, camp, so tends to define class with a name. But uh, you don't have to worry about type, type names. So the, I want to uh, express that this type of this argument, or type of that argument, or something like that, you don't have to name it. So you can generate the anonymous uh, interface. So you don't have to worry about names. Just because, you know, the make up the, the proper name is a pretty heavy task in programming, right? So the, if you, you can avoid naming them, so it's much easier for, for a brain and you can uh, put, stay the vague ideas in your brain, remain vague. So the type system, the soft type systems, like, should be kind of database. So you can retrieve a type of an expression. So here's a variable A that what you can ask type uh, of that expression, that variable. The you can re the the type retrieve type as an object, so you can check compatibility between types. Okay, this type of the the argument on the this type of expression. So are they compatible? So you can check the compatibility. So if it is they are compatible, the you you will not see the, any type error. But if they are incompat incompatible, they are not compatible. So you will see the compile time uh, type error. So and then you can check if a type has a specific method, like a, okay, this type do does this type has a method named foo or something. So the important point is the soft typing do not challenge 100% uh, coverage. So the current Ruby without any static type system just works, right? So the, if the type can be, uh, if type can, uh, type can be inferred from the, your code, so that's okay. You can check in static type, static type system. But uh, if you don't, that's okay. Just fall back to, uh, just fall back to the dynamic typing. So the 80% compile time check is far better than the, the 0% uh, right now. So it is easily fall back to dynamic typing. So we are not trying to 100% compatible. In addition, this is still the concept, but uh, we can use the runtime 
runtime type information. So, for example, the you, you write test, right? Right? You write test. <laughs> then your <laughs> your test system should not have any type error, right? So you can write, uh, you can execute the your test with the you know the type error correction mode. So you can correct the type of information running when you during the the test, the executing test, executing test. Then uh, you can build type database from your source code. And then in the future, you can ship your type database with your gem, so that you can uh, the, your users of your gem can use that kind of type information generated from the test execution. So by using this da database, you, you can have the more accurate compile time type check. So it will be awesome. <laughs> and then, but unfortunately, this is mere concept, but you can use it now. But it's still mere concept. But uh, it's a it's a part of the Ruby 3 project. We have a lot of things to down to Ruby, uh, Ruby 3, but uh, the so this kind of soft typing. So the soft typing, which is a static typing, kind of soft typing, that you can check the you typing type error in, in compile time without any execution. And then, so the, but uh, you will have that kind of the soft typing in Ruby 3. That is my hope and dream. The important message is we care about you. <laughs> we care about you. So the Ruby is pretty nice. The, most of us love Ruby, right? Yes. I force you to say that. <laughs> so most of us say, say love Ruby just because Ruby cares about you. Ruby cares about you. So Ruby try to reduce your burden in your development, the mental burden, or Ruby restore joy in your programming. So when you, when you were a child, then started programming, everything was fun. Even in the basic <laughs> or assembler. But uh, as you grow, you, you pick the programming as a job or responsibility, so you have to care about many things. So you make, you make money out of programming. So the joy is getting less enjoyable. The programming is less enjoyable. The joy is decreased the, the day by day. But Ruby tries to restore that kind of joy. Just because Ruby tries to reduce your burden, it tries to uh, joy in your programming. Just because Ruby kills you. Just because we, the designer or developer of Ruby, the language, care about you. So we care about how you feel during the programming. We are willing to improve the development experiment. That sometimes it really sucks, just because it fails to find your uh, type error in compile time, or it's, or it's, it's their document is less descriptive compared to the other programming language. But uh, we are, uh, despite the, the current state status, so we are willing to improve your uh, development experience. So we are trying. So we are sick of claims like uh, Ruby is dead, <laughs> Rails is dead, Ruby is old, and uh, I don't care. <laughs> as long as we are improving. Actually, I care. <laughs> I try not to care. <laughs> they, they hurt. But uh, actually, I try not to care. As long as we are moving forward, as long as we are moving forward, we, the, the Ruby, is, keep, uh, is moving forward. 
Ruby is moving forward. The, the, every Ruby version, every year we release a new Ruby. Last year, Christmas, we released Ruby 2.3, which has the improvement, keeping compatibility. And then we are going to release 2.4 this year. And it will, be, uh, it will improve uh, your experience, your programming experience. And uh, the, that kind of improvement keep goes on, then gradually into Ruby 3. So you may ask, when will Ruby 3 come? Actually, I don't know. I'm sorry. So my hope is we will see Ruby 3 in this decade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, before the Olympics in Tokyo. <laughs> but it's only my hope. <laughs> so we will, we will try making a Ruby 3. Uh, we will add a Ruby 3, the soft typing. And the three times fa uh, Ruby will be three will be three times faster compared to the Ruby 2.0, and we will add uh, some kind of real concurrency in the language. But uh, we have a lot of things to the, the, do, and uh, we have a lot of things to be done, and we need more resource, we need more power. So you have to wait for years. I'm sorry. But we wish your input and contribution to keep moving forward. We have to keep moving forward to survive, to make you happy. And uh, we will uh, improve the situation by working together as a community. So Rails will be improved. Rails 5 will come. So the, we will, uh, they will add many new things to improve uh, the development experience. And uh, as a platform, the Ruby language will be improved. And then we will add many things to improve your uh, development experience. experience. By the way, uh, Ruby 2.4. So this year, we were going to be released Ruby 2.4, uh, hopefully as a Christmas present this year, as usual. <laughs> Last week, we, we released the Ruby 2.4 preview one. In the, the Ruby 2.4 preview is not as big as 2.3, but uh, we added very important changes to the language. So the one of them is the fixed and the big number unification. So we will no longer have the fixed num and the big nums in the language, just integers. So when I first designed and implemented Ruby, so I, made, I stole many things from other language. Uh, for example, for, from Smalltalk. And Smalltalk has the two types of integers, like small integers and big integers. And then the Lisp has similar two types of integers, which is fixed nums and big nums, which are where I stole the ideas from it. So I, I stole those classification without thinking deeply. But uh, you know, I don't want to care about small things. So the distinguish, this, uh, distinction from small integer which is uh, in, in line, uh, and then big integers, which is big, and the, the lives in, uh, live in the heap, that is small things. You don't have to split them, them in, the, in the, the program side. So as after the years of consideration, finally we decided to unify those two classes. So we don't want to care about small things, so the fixed num and the integers are unified. The basic idea is from the flow num, the idea we introduced in 1.9. So the, in 64-bit 
uh, platform, 64-bit platform, the float has two uh, representation, implementation representation. So the small, small float numbers are inlined in the variable. So they are, they are immediate values. And then other float numbers are uh, allocated in the heaps. But uh, they are still same float class. So the, despite the, the implementation of representation difference, so they can be a same class. So that idea leads us uh, to unifying uh, fixed num and big num into one integer class. So the, that introduced the small incompatibility. So if you, if you uh, use fixed num class in your program, so fixed num class is, became uh, alias the integer class. So the, most of the case, it just work. It just work. But uh, if your program is very, uh, depends on the size of the fixed num or something like that, so it, it may uh, have some kind of compatibility problem. So you have to be really, very care about what, if your programs care about the size of the uh, fixed nums. So the integer, uh, integer unification. So the second one is the smarter case conversion. So we have the up case, down case, or several other case conversion methods in string class. So it worked only for ASCII characters. Just because you know, the, it is quite difficult to define what the case is out of the uh, ASCII characters. You know, you English speakers, doesn't care about the, uh, you know, weird, <laughs> non ASCII uh, case characters. But uh, you know, in the in the Unicode consortium, uh, from the Unicode consortium, you can obtain the huge table of case conversion. So now it works for other characters. The let me uh, explain about the background. So when I first designed the Ruby, so Unicode were there, but uh, it is, you know, it can be very ignoble. So Jap Japan has uh, several uh, uh, character set to, to Japanese characters, and Chinese has their own uh, encodings, and uh, Russian has their is their encoding, India has, every country has their encoding other than ASCII. So, so we, we cannot define any uh, way to case conversion out of ASCII. So at, at that time, we have to, uh, we, we were able to handle ASCII only. But uh, you know, as time goes by, Unic the people uh, using Unicode, the number of people using Unicode is getting bigger and bigger. Now, almost everyone using Unicode, especially uh, the, in the web-related field. So now we can uh, rely on the, some kind of the Unicode case conversion database. So the Ruby 2.3 and prior, so hello upcase is hello. But uh, if you uh, use E with what, dot, <laughs> dash, or something, <laughs> is on top, so it's not converted at all. So hello. But uh, after Ruby 2.4, you will have a uh, proper case conversion here. Uh, 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 here. <laughs> But uh, if you if we want uh, the old behavior, you can put ASCII as an argument, so the, you you can get the old behavior. So no, we don't want to care about small things. So the having the dots or some the accent or something like that is trivial for us 
in daily, our daily use. So I want you to, I want you don't have to care about or worry about small things. Actually, <laughs> implementers made big effort to uh, make this possible. Ah, uh, for example, Takeshi. Ah, <coughs> uh, do does anyone have any uh, knowledge about Takeshi? Oh, you do. So, <laughs> in Turkish, the the capital I converted to I without dot. In the ASCII capital I, in should be converted into the <laughs> I without dot, and then you have the other I, <laughs> which is, can correspond to the uh, I with dot in the ASCII I. So in so when you are using a uh, Turkish, so you you not rely on the I to I ASCII I to I conversion, so. In that case, you have to uh, specify dot uh, current Turkish instead of ASCII, where it is. Ah, here it is. The, you have to spec specify the Turkish instead of ASCII, so you can get the Turkish com conversion table. That, that made us yeah, very troubled. <laughs> anyway, in any way, I promise, we promise, we co-committers promise, we will do everything to keep moving forward just because only paranoia survives. Yeah, we are paranoia to survive. We have to be paranoia to survive. We have to keep moving forward to survive. You know, there are tons of other programming languages. Some, something is new. So maybe you are interested in the other programming language like Elixir, or Clojure, or Scala, or JavaScript, or TypeScript, or many other languages, many other rivals. So, you know, you are okay to move on to other programming languages. But for me, with a Ruby, I'm nothing. <laughs> so I have to survive. But the, the primary motivation to keep moving forward is to let us care less about small things. So to make you happy, to, make in, to, let, to let you enjoy your programming again and ever. Happy hacking. Thank you. <laughs>
Hi, any more questions? Please um, don't be embarrassed or afraid to come up. Here you go. Um, so with uh, um, uh, more encoding support in 2.4, does it mean that now um, uh, there are a lot of mappings in the Ruby repository with uh, all those encodings? Yes, the so Ruby, Ruby repository became bigger. This. Um, how bigger, in like 10 percent or? I don't know. I didn't count, but uh, much bigger. <laughs> Thanks. I think it's uh, fantastic that you have the, um, the the case conversion in other languages now. That's wonderful. Thank you mm -hmm. for that. Um, in Java, there are locales which can govern things. Like you, you were talking about the very interesting case of the reverse Turkish I situation. Um, in Java, you can have a locale which is the current locale. You can best override the current locale uh, for an operation. And it also provides uh, currency formatting, gate formatting, decimal formatting based on the locale. Any possibility we would ever see that in Ruby? Uh, not in the core classes. And, uh, we, the, maybe we, locale has some, of course, locale has some, some benefits, but uh, as uh, the the, pre, the old C++ programmer, so locale gave, gave me burden or pain rather than the benefit. So I personally, I don't like locale. So I don't do that by myself. <laughs> but uh, I, I'm not object, I'm, I'm not against uh, about the adding locale to as a, some kind of the gem or the additional library. Uh, so, will the integer unification break any existing code that uh, uses C extensions? Uh, including C extension, the very few uh, examples ha uh, of the breakage. I know only one example uh, report from the outside is the what the message pack is, which is which. Uh, requires the size of the fixed num by uh, using the is a, what is a method, but uh, this is very exceptional, I think. No, but say for example, you're using the uh, fixed to int macro for converting uh, fixed nums to integers. Yeah, we provide macros to distinguish. Uh, so, will that macro still be there, or will it be removed from? Uh, the current macro does work, and uh, we provide new macro to distinct the unified uh, version and the ununified version. Uh, any more questions from the audience? Um, okay, I, I personally have a question for Max. So. Um, Ruby is generally a very polite, uh, polite. <laughs> language, and um, I'm wondering if if you had to do anything to to enforce this politeness for your contributors and both like developers, like. Pol yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure about the definition of polite here, <laughs> but uh, you know the we we could commit is uh, very. Are straightforward each other, so they actually they hit each other. <laughs> so if if one of our committers make bad code, so they are they are blamed so heavily. <laughs> so it's not that different. It's not polite in that sense. Okay, sorry, I got it wrong. <laughs> okay. So um, let's all. Uh, oh, one more question, please. Ah, sure. Thank you. Hi, Matt. Uh, Ruby is awesome and we all love it really here, but you said let's move forward a couple of times during your talk. And uh, like moving forward for most of the people here is kind of hard for Ruby. Mm -hmm. uh, because I'm sure like can people in, in here raise your hand if you ever contributed anything in Ruby to open source? Like I mean gems in Ruby, not C code. Okay, now who can write C good enough to actually contribute to Ruby itself? <laughs> uh, uh, I, I would say this is a big problem. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us how can we as Ruby community help with the Ruby itself? Because most of us unfortunately 
don't have enough experience with C, especially to write in the code base as complicated as mm -hmm. you write. Ah, uh, yeah, the you know the information and use case is very. Uh, we need very much the, the information, uh, very much. So the if you feel something, uh, if you feel somewhere to improve, so let's uh, tell us through Twitter, through blog, or uh, uh, issue tracker, or anything. So you can tell. Okay, there is a room uh, to improvement in Ruby language. So you don't ha you don't have to have a knowledge of C code. So just you you thinks you need uh, to improve here or there in the language, or maybe you can uh, benchmark your your application. So the this part of Ruby is very slow. You have uh, the core team have to improve here or something like that. That kind of the concrete information is very crucial for us to improve uh, to work on. So of course, if you can write C code, so you can uh, send us a, a pull request or a patch or anything like that. This is more than welcome. But if you're not, that's okay. Just just uh, count uh, tell us your use case, your benchmark. Your ideas, or uh, or maybe your improvement for our documentation, or anything like that. Any contribution is welcome, and uh, m many of those does not require C knowledge. Thank you. Hey, uh, so <laughs> uh, just want to ask one question: Where, where did you get that lonely operator T-shirt? Because really, I think I really want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, after I, I made a, a lonely operator, so the, the, a friend of mine is working as a t-shirt company, uh, <laughs> and uh, that, their website is running in Ruby, so he, he made this t-shirt for me and gave, gave this for me. So I don't think you can buy it. So if um, last call for questions. All right, no movement. Okay, so uh, let us once again give a round of applause to Max. Thank you.